What an incredible presence of the Lord.
worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is why you need to be at church. This is why we need to gather together. In corporate worship. God will do so much more when we're in unified praise. Amen. Amen. There's nothing that limits Him except our imagination. There's nothing that restricts Him except our reasoning, our rationale, and our hesitation of coming and allowing Him to do. This is what church, this is what church is about. Paul teaches in 1 Corinthians, especially in the 14th chapter. He gives us direction. The intent of the 14th chapter focuses on the needs of the unbeliever. That when people would come in, that our worship, our worship, he says, for when, when there are tongues in interpretation, it causes the unbeliever to believe. That's why we need to operate freely in the moves of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our focus is on those that don't believe, but also, He said, when I speak in tongues, I edify myself. That's why you need to pray in tongues. Amen. Amen. That's right. You need to talk in tongues regularly. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. Because you need to allow the Holy Ghost to edify you. You need to be lifted up. You need to be built up. You need to be encouraged in the Spirit. And sometimes the Holy Ghost will reach into avenues that the preacher won't reach into. And the Holy Ghost will lead you and guide you and direct you and teach you in all things, Jesus said. We need, we need to look at speaking in tongues not as from a position of evidence of something that I have. But it's a relationship. And the Holy Ghost is a resource. It is a storehouse. A well of information and power and ability that is beyond my understanding. That's why we need to pray in the Holy Ghost. We need to sing in the Holy Ghost. We need to worship in the Holy Ghost. For the body's sake. Right. I'm edified by speaking in tongues. But listen to me. The purpose of us coming together is not all about me. It has to be about us. And when it becomes all about me, I have perverted worship. Yes. Amen. 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 Paul talks about order and disorder. It's disorderly when you become the focal point of everything that's going on here. And it's out of order when what you do stops. Just 
in the same measure? Anybody? From the book of Job, the 42nd chapter, if you give me about 15 minutes, please retain this attitude and this atmosphere. Chapter 42, verse 1, Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything. I know that thou canst do Somebody say it. Somebody say it again. Somebody think in your mind what you're dealing with. What's perplexing you and, and what's frustrating you and, and what's overpowering you and say it, I know. Say it like you mean it. I know. I don't think. I don't wonder. I don't just believe. I know God can do anything. I said, I know God can do anything. And that means He can do something about what I'm dealing with right now. Because He can do anything. You say, well, well I have addictions. He can do anything. You say, well, I have worries. Well, He can do anything. You say, well, I have financial problems. He can do anything. without knowledge therefore have I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me which I knew not here I beseech thee and I will speak and I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear but now mine eye seeth thee I want to talk to you just a few minutes about but now but now things look different when you're on this side of the mountain things look a little bit different when you're in the bottom of the valley things look a little bit different when death's staring you in the face things look a little bit different when the doctor says look there's nothing else we can do things look a little bit different when the people that you love and that you depend on say look I'm through I'm out of here
There's a huge difference. Sometimes we who believe or believe are pushed into a corner where there's no way out because God wants us to understand what it's like on the other side. And the things that He wants to reveal to us cannot be revealed to us while we're in an atmosphere like this and while we're surrounded by brothers and sisters of like faith and like-minded that are worshiping like we are. And sometimes God chooses to separate us from the herd and put us in a place where no word of encouragement can get us out. And there's no prayer partner that can pray us out. And there's no scripture we can go to that will ease our mind and soothe our troubled spirit. Sometimes He puts us in places that we don't understand. But He can do everything. And everything that He's trying to do is to change my perspective of who and what He is. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm going to tell you, I thought I knew about God when I was uh, about 23, 24 years old. But when I was lying flat on my back with pins in my head and 15 pounds of traction holding my neck apart where I had had a diving accident and broken my neck when I was in intensive care for five days and morphine was flowing through my brain every time there was a moment of consciousness, my mind went to God. Because this is something I'd never faced before. And I thought I knew about Him. And I thought I understood things concerning Him. And I had learned a lot in reference to Him. But when you're going through the valley, and when you're going through the hellacious trouble that only life can present to you, you get a different perspective of God because you will approach God from a different perspective. Anybody here been through medical problems? Anybody here in medical problems? And you say, well, why am I going through it? Probably just the same reason Job went through it. So he could see a different perspective of God. So he could learn something about God that blessings and peace and ease and good times and happiness and joy couldn't teach him. He needed to learn that regardless of what he was going through, God was with him. And he needed to learn so he could communicate it to us that he performeth that which is appointed for me. And many such things are with him. That there are things in my life and things in my destiny and things in my future that he wants me to accomplish. But I can't learn what I need to know about him sitting on a pew and speaking in tongues all the time. It's going to take some nights of loneliness and nights of concern and nights of worry when, when there's nobody around and I, I find my way to my altar of prayer and I'm pouring my guts out to God because I don't know why I'm going through what I'm going through and I don't understand why I'm having to deal with what I'm having to deal with. But I've learned something in my 60 plus year journey on the face of this earth. If you know the why, you can deal with the what. And if we can adapt in our mind and in our spirit the fact that regardless of what it looks like, God is in control. And regardless of what it feels like, God knows exactly what He's doing. And when I understand that and resolve that in my mind, I'm able to face the oppositions that I have to face knowing there's a purpose behind this. There's a reason behind this. And when it's all said and done, I'm going to be able to say like Job. But now, I didn't understand it before. I don't think Daniel understood the, 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 the intricacies of God's ability and power fully before the den of lions. But when he was in the den of lions, oh yeah, he had talked about Jehovah, my provider, and, and his banner over me is love. 
and he's my protector and he's my deliverer. But but sometimes God puts you in situations just to prove to you that his word is true and that he's everything and everybody that he's claimed himself to be. And he's going to put you in a hopeless, helpless situation so you can turn around and look at him one day and say, I didn't understand it fully, but now. Now that I'm on this side of the whirlwind, now that I'm on this side of my cancer episode, I need a little amen right now, a little help. Now that I'm on this side of my divorce, y'all got a little quiet there. Now that I'm on this side of the upsetting of my children's lives and the imbalance and and all that's going on in my family around me, but but if we can make up our minds, number one, we're not here by accident. Number one, we're not in this by by just by just happenstance or coincidence. If all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose, then all things work together for the good. And if He says all things work together for the good. Today has to be working for my good. And there's going to be a but now. And if you can look at what you're dealing with and just just ask God, are you trying to give me a wake-up call? Uh, well, why would he do that to me? I don't know, but he put Moses in the desert for 40 years. He did. He put Moses in the desert. So Moses could come to himself and learn about himself and give God an opportunity to reveal himself in a greater dimension. Well, I, I, I don't know, but he knocked Paul, he knocked Saul of Tarsus down on the road to Damascus and blinded his eyes. Why? So he could introduce himself to Paul in a different dimension. I'm the one that you're fighting against. Well, why did you why did you knock me down? And I've tried to reveal myself to you through the law and through my word. But you choose to intellectually approach me. But I want you to get down to the nitty gritty right now. I'm going to put you flat on your back. I'm going to make you blind as a bat. And I'm going to make you as helpless as helpless can be. And you're going to cry out to me. God, open my eyes. Show me what you want me to see regarding you. Sometimes it does. Take a mountain. Sometimes it does take a desert. Sometimes it does take a troubled sea for God to be able to reveal to us things that, that we can't see while we're going through the blessings. Amen. I, I, I've come to the conclusion there are no mistakes in life. There's just lessons. There's, there's no mistakes. There's just lessons. And if we can look at everything that we deal with as some type of lesson that God has ushered into my life or ushered me into, like the three Hebrew children, I wonder how they felt just before they were thrown into the fire and how they felt while they were in the fire realizing, man, we're not even going to get a suntan while we're in here. The Bible says that the ropes fell off there was not even the smell of smoke on them. Now before they had proclaimed, regardless of what he does, we're not going to bow, we're not going to worship you, and I appreciate that fact. But I promise you, there was a deeper, greater revelation of who and what God was when they opened up those furnace doors and said, hey, hey y'all, y'all come out of here. All four of you. I know there was only three. Come on, and you feel like there's no help but there's always help there even when you can't see and I don't know what you're going through I don't know what you're dealing with I don't know the hopelessness and the helplessness that you're facing I don't know the, the uncertainty and the humongous obstacle that is before you but I promise there's somebody here tonight there's somebody here tonight that needs to hear what I'm telling you God will 
will see you through whatever it is that is troubling you right now. God is going to take you through it. And when you get on the other side of it, you're going to say like Job. But now, well, Arnie, you never knew what was going to happen to you with this stroke. You never knew, but I promise this whole church, this whole movement can tell by your preaching in the past couple of years. You've seen an aspect of God that you never saw before. Before it happened. You, 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 you're awakened to a vein and to a voice of God that only this dilemma could present to you. I'm not, I'm not talking about, well, you know, I'm, I'm late on my car payment. I'm not talking about, I'm, I'm not talking about, oh, well, my girlfriend broke up. I'm not talking about, is anybody here facing something impossible? I mean, impossible. Impossible. I'm not, I'm not talking about, well, you know, I got rheumatoid arthritis. Hold on, hold on. I can't be I'm talking about impossible. That the only way you're going to get through it is if God's going to help you. The only way you're going to get on the other side of it and have your sanity and your health is for, for God who Job said, I know thou canst do everything. Now see, he said that after he's gone through losing his ten children, burying them together on the same day, standing in the face of all the people that proclaimed he was, he was a hypocrite, all of his friends that at one time revered and admired him. I, I'm talking about impossible stuff. I'm talking about, well, your family don't have nothing to do with you anymore. Your friends don't have nothing to do with you anymore. I'm talking about impossible stuff. I'm, talk, I'm, not, I'm not talking about, oh, I broke my finger and, and I didn't get the ring. I'm talking about something impossible. I'm talking about the doctor said, yeah, this is it. We can't do anything else. We've done all we can do. I'm talking about impossible. Impossible. Come on, anybody, any impossible situation here? Job said, I know that thou canst do everything. I hope I can move like that when I'm his age. That's impossible. But if you look at what you're facing, if you look at what you're facing, and you get honest with God, I'm not talking about, oh, name it, claim it, and, and all that jive and all that stuff, all that garbage. I'm talking about if you will ask God, what is it that you want to show me while I'm going through this impossibility? What is it that you're trying to tell me by bringing me here? It's no accident that I'm here. No, 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 no. No. People didn't put me here. I'm sure, I'm sure the prodigal, when he, when he woke up, and had mud caked all over him, you know, and, and he's trying to get it off, and he smells like a big old boar hog, and they're grunting and wallowing all around him. I'm sure in his mind there, there was fresh visions of Papa going through his mind. There, there was revelations. There was illumination of, of the goodness and the consistency and the, the unwaveringness of his father. And, and he began to understand all the things that his father was trying to do for him and to him and bless him with. And he began to awaken. And he said, I shall arise. If you will look at whatever, if it's failure in your life. What? And you, you say, well, God didn't bring me here. Well, God allowed you. To keep on butting your head against the wall. Until you.